the number of different orders in which four songs, A, B, C, and D, can be played if no song is repeated? That's the question. What's the number of different orders in which four songs can be played if no song is repeated? Okay, just pause there. Okay. Now, this number is 24. Okay. Now, how did I know it was 24? There's a really easy pattern you can solve, and I'm going to illustrate it to you. You should jot this down with me. First, by just thinking about a simpler example and then listing them out. Okay, so watch this. That's with four songs. That's with four songs. Let's imagine if there were three. Three is a nice simple number, okay? If the songs are called A, B, and C, we can actually write out all of the possible orders. There are six of them. Someone want to suggest one? A, B, C. A, B, C. That's the first one. Give me another one. A, C, B. Okay. B, again. Another one? B, A, C. Last two? C, A, B. And C, B, A. Okay. Sure, the Commonwealth Bank is coming last, that's all right. Now, there are six. I know there have to be only six because I can think about this in a more logical way that doesn't require me to list everything out. And this should remind you of what we did back in probability. You've got to have three slots in your playlist, right? You can't repeat any. So you can think about this in this way. This first song that you're gonna play before anything has been put down, you've got how many choices for that the first song? Three. It's A or B or C. So three choices, okay? Once you've picked one of them, suppose you pick A as your first one, okay? How many choices do you have for the second song? Two. There are two left, and you can see them there, B or C, right? So there are two choices here. But once you've chosen those last, sorry, those first two songs, there's only one left, right? So there's only the last remaining one, and that's it. Now, what do you do with each of these numbers? We're going to multiply them, right? Because what you're creating is like this probability tree. Do you remember the probability trees we did like a couple of weeks ago? You're gonna have, another way of drawing this is, one, two, three, there's your first song, A, B, and C. Then after that, it branches off again for the two choices that you have remaining. Here it'd be B and C, here it'd be A and C, and then lastly, A and B. In fact, you can see these choices up here in my list, right? Then once you pick the first two, well, this one now has to go to C, this one now has to go to B, and you've, what have I got here? B, okay. Right? In fact, is this the order? No, it's not quite, I think it's almost. We flipped this one around. I was so close, okay? So you can see, this is three times two times one. And you have a look at the branches and that tells you what you have to multiply by, okay? So now, without having to draw the tree because it would take you forever, for question one, if there are four songs, then what's the total number of ways you can arrange your playlist? It's not three times two times one, it's four times three times four times one. Right? So the ways equals four times three times two times one. Now, for a number like three or four, you, you can write that out, it doesn't take you very long. But later on, you're going to have to do questions where it says, like, oh, how bad if you have 30 songs in your playlist? And you don't want to stand there writing 30 times 29 times, etc. So mathematicians made up a little piece of notation that does this. We call it the factorial. Okay? So, I don't know how many of you have seen on your calculator, you've got an exclamation mark. Learning a new button. And the name of the, um, of the symbol of the operation is... Factorial. Yeah, you just, um, you just unlocked a new power. Now, why is it an exclamation mark? Well, what's one factorial? Just look at how we've defined it. One factorial is just one. Your calculator can confirm that for you, if you like. What's two factorial? It's just going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, you already know what 3 and 4 factorial are. We Why? wrote 3 factorial over there. Why? 4 factorial, you can compute. How is that my fault? Sorry, it's not even on the bottom. Have a look. These numbers are still small enough for you to deal with. 120. 6 factorial. 7 factorial. 5,040. Okay, now your calculator can tell you all these numbers. This is 
This is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now just have a look at these numbers. Look at how fast they're growing. Really, really fast. Okay. Look, 7 songs on your playlist, that's a really short playlist. But there are 5,040 ways to do it. I typed in 999. That's crazy. Your calculator won't be happy. Yeah, to be. The largest one calculated into is 69.0, a lot of zeros, and then you wait, but what's the zero? So it doesn't do seven to seven. It'll it'll bark on you. I have seven songs. I have seven songs in my playlist. I have one. Okay. I have exactly seven songs. Now, we've only done. Stay with me. We've only done part A, right? The main thing about this is actually, do you remember I said this is connected to probability? So this is A, the number of ways. Read part B. You read part B? Yeah, very good. If the particular order we want, the probability is A, C, B, D, right? That is one of the 24 arrangements, right? So think back to your probability, the favorable outcomes, there's only one way to play like that, and we just decided there are 24 total different playlists you could have. So that's the probability. 